there, I'm Elizabeth Hines from OurPaleoFamily.com. You are watching on the KidCast page on Facebook, so make sure you like that page. They have great, lots of great content over there, lots of crafting and um, fun activities with kids, all totally clean, so um, make sure to like that page. And then hop on over to Our Paleo Family on Facebook and like my page too, please. Um, I'm, a, I'm a blog, so you can go to OurPaleoFamily.com. I'm not a blog. I'm a person. I have a blog called Our Paleo Family, and there I post lots of recipes and some travel reports, how we ate paleo on the road, and um, fun information like that. Lots and lots of recipes. So if you're just diving into the paleo diet and you don't know where to start, I have a couple of great articles that are right at the top that say, what is paleo? What is autoimmune paleo? Um, there's an index of a whole bunch of recipes categorized for you there. Um, so definitely check out the website, even if you're not new to paleo and you just want some more ideas. My cooking style is kind of the way I grew up, um, old favorites that are comfort foods, just normal, hearty, tasty food that we have converted into a paleo recipe. So you'll find lots of recipes that are kid friendly, um, lots of things that seem really familiar to you. Um, so tonight we're making an autoimmune paleo meal. These are fried, um, tempura fried shrimp tacos with, I have an autoimmune tortilla recipe that I've created and some what I call tropical salsa slaw. So for my tacos, I wanted slaw and I wanted like a mango salsa. So I just combined those together and made it a salsa slaw. So that's what we're making tonight. So it's totally autoimmune paleo friendly. And I'm going to get started and I'm going to talk to you about um, autoimmune paleo as I go. So the first thing we're going to do is make our tortillas. And if you have been eating paleo, especially if you've been eating autoimmune paleo, you are probably really missing anything that resembles bread or wrap. And so coming up with this recipe that works was just a godsend for us. I use them as um, uh, like a tortilla for, for a breakfast wrap. You can make a quesadilla with them, obviously tacos, that's what we're doing tonight. You cut them up and make them like tortilla chips and um, bake them a little bit longer. Lots of options. Um, but I chose these recipes too because just by reading the recipe, it can seem a little complicated. So I thought it would be a good one to show you. Although they're really very simple, very few ingredients. And it just so happens that the shrimp and the um, tortillas have a lot of the same ingredients in them. So to make the base for our tortillas, we need two acceptable flours for paleo, uh, arrowroot starch and cassava flour. Now, if I were just making paleo, I might use almond flour, some other nut flours, but on autoimmune paleo, you can't have any nuts. That's something that you need to take out for a while because it can be very irritating to the gut, very inflammatory for a lot of people. So cassava um, is, a, is a flour that's kind of new on the scene and it's completely acceptable for an autoimmune diet. So we need three quarters of a cup of the cassava. If you just joined us, I'm Elizabeth from OurPaleoFamily.com. I didn't introduce my husband. He is behind the camera tonight, Chris. And he will, because my eyes are not quite good enough, he'll probably be reading comments to me and helping me um, know if you have any questions. So if you hear me talking to somebody besides you, that's him and he'll be following me around the kitchen. So we're making some autoimmune paleo shrimp, fried shrimp tacos tonight. So I have three quarters of a cup of cassava flour, a quarter of a cup of arrowroot starch, and my other dry ingredient is just salt. So half a teaspoon of salt, I like sea salt. I think it has good flavor, it has some minerals in it, but you can use whatever salt you like. There are lots of fancy salts on the market. And do like I do and stir it really wildly so it flies all over the kitchen. Hopefully you have somebody else to clean up your kitchen for you. So just mix up your dry really well. And this is palm shortening, which is um, from the palm fruit. There's a lot of controversy about palm shortening because in, the, in a lot of places it is not sustainably harvested. But this particular one from Tropical Traditions, I highly recommend them for any sort of coconut or tropical type product. They, um, they're all sustainably sourced, it's organic. I'm being really careful the way I put that in because I don't want to get any flour in my palm shortening because it will contaminate.
contaminate it and then I'll potentially have rancid palm shortening. So always make sure you're not just stirring in here and then go stir in your palm shortening um, because it, it will go rancid. And you'll know it because the next time you open it, it will smell really bad. And my cameraman is gonna get me some cold water. I'm gonna fill up my measuring cup. So I'm just gonna use my hands. My grandma taught me how to make pie. And I don't know if, you know, in Mexico or Spanish culture, if they would make tortillas in the same manner using their hands. But this seems like a pie dough sort of recipe to me. And grandma always taught me to use my hands. That's how you could tell when it was just right. So I have my hands in there. And also it just is the easiest way to get the fat really well incorporated. If you don't have palm shortening, this, I mean, as you can see, this is a gallon size bucket. I order it from Tropical Traditions. It's the most economical way to get it. But they sell it at my local Kroger. They have it at Whole Foods. Um, so it's not an unusual ingredient, not this brand, but there are other brands available. You could also use any sort of um, animal fat like lard or tallow or duck fat if you happen to have that on hand. I wouldn't use, um, you know, we don't use the refined vegetable oils. Those are no-no on the paleo diet. So I have my arrowroot cassava salt and palm shortening and I want about a half a cup of water but I'm gonna add a little less because it's summer oops I put in a lot and it's humid here so it, there's more moisture in the air you, you might not notice it but your cooking will notice it the arrowroot and the cassava are both really abs absorptive is that a word they're very drying, and so you'll, I mean, your water will just get sucked up immediately. I mean, just instantly, it's all absorbed. It does not have to work very hard. But you want to make sure that it's, your dough is wet all the way through, so kind of squish it around, and that's really nice and wet. And I put um, just about three quarters of a cup in there. My recipe says a half a cup plus one to two tablespoons, and like I said, I just put in almost three quarters of a cup. So. It took a good amount. You don't want it to be too dry because then your tortillas will crack apart and, and they won't work. So I'm going to um, set my dough out here, rinse my hand off, and then I'm going to get my stove going. I'm going to talk to you while I'm washing my hands. If you just joined us, you're watching on KidCast on Facebook. I'm Elizabeth from OurPaleoFamily.com, and I'm making tonight some autoimmune paleo delicious recipes. When I first started having to eat auto, according to the autoimmune protocol, you'll hear this called lots of different things. Autoimmune protocol, autoimmune paleo, usually people abbreviate it AIP, elimination diet, anti-inflammatory diet, it's all the same thing. Um, so I may call it different things as we go along. I'm going to sprinkle some, some arrowroot on my countertop to keep it, keep my tortillas from sticking. And I'm going to move my palm shortening over here because I'm going to need to put some in my skillet. I don't want a, a lot, but I mean, that's about a tablespoon. But like I said, it's kind of um, really ab absorbs a lot. So it'll use, it'll, the, each tortilla will soak up about that much. And I'm going to turn this on about medium. And one thing I really like about this recipe, there, there are quite a few recipes now on the internet. Um, even for tortillas that are autoimmune paleo, using this cassava flour, but a lot of them say roll it out between parchment paper, um, two pieces of parchment paper, then you got to peel the parchment paper off. That is a pain in the neck, and I do not want to have to mess with it. I want to be able to roll out right on my countertop and not have to worry about peeling. Oh, it's, are you tilting it down on purpose? I thought the camera was falling. <laughs> um, so I cut it in half. Can you see that? And I like a decent size for our family is a tortilla about this big and so I make 10 out of this recipe if you want bigger ones just cut them a little bit bigger so I cut it in half and then cut them into approximately equal sizes it's it doesn't really matter it's it's not science so then I roll it into a ball and I just do one at a time this is my it's a little non-stick rolling pin I have this because I took a cake decorating class when my kids were really little so I can make them fancy birthday cakes. And yes, they still get birthday cakes. They still get paleo birthday cakes. They are covered in very non-paleo icing, but I have figured out a couple paleo cake recipes. There's a really good chocolate one on my 
website. My daughter happens to really like that one. One thing about this recipe that is some, part of it that seems a little bit tricky is that this dough, when you roll it out, it's, re it's really fragile. It will likely rip a little bit, but just keep your extra water handy from mixing up your dough and you can just repair it really easily. This one hasn't ripped on me, but it's also fresh. As I get towards the end, it will have dried out a little bit. I want to get some of that extra um, arrowroot off. I don't want a whole bunch in my skillet. This is a bench scraper. It's, it's metal. I use this to clean my counter. I use it to lift up, like if I'm rolling out sugar cookies, to lift them up and move them to the, um, the cookie sheet so they don't break or I'd have them all over the floor. This is a really inexpensive and handy tool. I'm going to turn up my, I just, I hate to touch my skillet with my dirty hands. Usually I would wash my hands all the time, but I'm trying to save a little bit of time. So, sorry, honey, he's my dishwasher. He's going to have to clean up all of this in the end. So turn that up because you want it to be warm. You want that, to, you want it to kind of sizzle when you put them in there. Um, when I make these, I do just do one at, at a time per skillet, but I will I'll usually have two skillets going, but I'm just going to do a couple for you tonight. So in this one goes, see it ripped a little bit when I put it in there, but it'll just kind of heal itself as it cooks. And it's not sizzling, I didn't have it on quite high enough. So while that one starts, I'm going to make one more and then we'll move on to our shrimp. So as I roll it, I just make sure I, I'm sort of keeping a round shape, um, even pat it out a little bit. Like I said, I, what I really love about this recipe, besides the fact that it really does taste good, um, is that I can just roll it right out on my counter. I don't have to mess with rolling it between parchment paper or wax paper because I just think that's a pain in the neck or plastic wrap. I just do kind of scoot it around a little bit, make sure it's still loose and it's not stuck to my counter. And I don't think, if, I, don't think I said this, but you know, it's really delicate while it is raw. But once they cook, they puff up and they're, they're much more sturdy and it will hold together. If you want to do a tostada, which is like a flat taco, you can fry them a little bit more crispy. But I like to fold it up and eat it like a taco and have all the filling stay inside. So I cook them until they're just cooked. So they won't really be browned, um, but they're just cooked through and that way they still keep some of their pliability. So I am going to go ahead and roll these into balls and that one is sizzling over there. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about autoimmune paleo while I do this really quick. So paleo is, as you, you probably know, but just in case somebody's just joined us and they don't really know, paleo, a lot of people follow it as um, an anti-inflammatory diet if they're dealing with an autoimmune disease or even joint pain or headaches. Um, children with ADD often find um, a lot of relief from their symptoms by following a paleo diet. There's a lot of connection between the gut and the brain and most of these diseases are coming from a leaky gut and so by following the paleo diet you can heal that leaky gut and and be healthy. I have Crohn's disease, my husband has type 1 diabetes so we eat this way to keep both of us healthy. He's not going to be able to get rid of his diabetes but I am able to keep my Crohn's disease under control without um, the harsh medications that are most commonly prescribed for people with Crohn's disease. I'm going to just wrap this up because I'm not going to cook all these tonight. You could roll them out and um, put them between the dreaded parchment paper. Put a little piece of parchment paper between each one and put them in the fridge. And then you would have them ready to cook at a later date. I usually just go ahead and cook them all at once even though we'll only eat four or five at, you know, at one meal time. My kids are not super big eaters. Um, but then I have them left over in the fridge. So move over here, honey. I want to show them this one that is cooking away. Can you, can you see that, boy, the, the light's really harsh there. I don't know if you can see it, but there we go. It's kind of bubbled up around the edges. And it's nice and sturdy. Like you see, I can move it all around. It's not going to fall apart on me. I am going to get a big spatula though because I don't want to make a mess. I don't want to be silly and break it. And go ahead and flip it. And it'll just have to cook for another minute or two on that side. I have a plate sitting right here with a just slightly damp paper towel to lay on top so it'll stay 
damp while I, while I get the rest of my food ready. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start working on my shrimp while I keep telling you about autoimmune paleo. So paleo, we leave out legumes, dairy, gluten, all grains really, which would include corn and all the pseudo grains like quinoa. Um, no grains, no dairy, no legumes, which includes soy, which is in a lot of packaged products. You have to really watch out for that one. No refined sugars and no refined oils. And then when you go to autoimmune paleo, which is a step further, you also have to take out eggs. You leave out nuts and seeds, which very sadly means that we leave out coffee and chocolate. But it's not forever. It's just for a short time. Um, the whole idea behind doing an autoimmune paleo diet or an elimination type diet is that you add foods back in. So I did go for, what, I mean, a couple months without coffee or caffeine of any kind, and I survived, ha ha, and I could add it back in and I was perfectly fine. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. You won't have to be without it forever. But then you also leave out nightshade vegetables, which are peppers, white potatoes, eggplant, and tomatoes, and all seed-based spices. So you're probably saying, what can I eat? So what you can eat on the autoimmune paleo diet is good healthy meat, um, the same kind of meat you would eat on a paleo diet um, from animals raised without hormones and antibiotics and um, uh, like bacon without nitrates and nitrites and all that kind of stuff. So healthy meat, farm raised fish, sorry, not farm raised fish, uh, wild fish, wild caught fish and shellfish and fruits and vegetables. So you have to get creative because you will get really tired of eating a chicken breast and some steamed broccoli or a hamburger patty wrapped in a piece of lettuce. So we are having shrimp tacos with an actual taco shell, with a salsa slaw with mango and pineapple, and it's all totally autoimmune paleo. So you have to get creative, and if your brain won't go there, then go to my website, and I actually recommend a lot of other blogs that I, that I really like that have great recipes for the autoimmune diet. There's a lot of information out there. But I happen to think my recipes are some of the best. So be sure to go to ourpaleofamily.com, and I'm going to put my second tortilla in. My skillet's nice and warm now, which is good. And a little piece broke off, but that's okay. So in it goes. That one sizzled. That's just what I want. I'll kind of tilt that so the oil sort of surrounds it. If you had some lard from a good, healthy pig, tortillas cooked in lard would be really delicious. So I'm going to use my bench scraper like I told you to do and I'm going to scrape my bench. I'm going to clean it up just a little bit so I have um, a clean place to work. And I'm going to keep this handy because I will probably need it for something else. So we're making shrimp tacos tonight. This tempura batter that I'm going to mix up, you could use it for um, vegetables, you could use it for chicken, you could use it for fish and actually I've done all of those and they're all really really good. Um, but my kids love shrimp. It's a really big treat, so we're having shrimp. And if you've just joined us, you're watching Our Paleo Family. We're cooking an autoimmune paleo meal tonight on KidCast on Facebook. Please be sure to like the KidCast page. When the show's over, hop over to the Our Paleo Family page and like that one too. I'm glad you're here. If you have any questions or comments or there's a recipe you'd like to see me cook in the future, um, please give us that information in the comments. My husband will read it. I probably won't because... I don't have my bifocals on, <laughs> so, uh, but he's manning the camera for me and he'll help me get that information. So we're gonna make our tempura batter because it really needs to sit for a few minutes. Um, and I don't know, acclimate, marinate, something, I don't know. It just is better if it sits for a few minutes before you use it. So for our tortillas that are cooking over here, we use cassava flour and arrowroot and we're using the exact same things and actually the same proportions to make our tempura batter. Um, although I got my measuring cup dirty, so I'm going to wing it just a little bit. That's my only quarter cup measure, so I'm going to get my half a cup because I need three quarters of a cup of cassava flour, which is a totally acceptable flour for the autoimmune paleo diet. This is not rocket science. You can sort of um, wing it a little bit. So that's a, I've about halfway filled up my half cup measure, so that's about a quarter of a cup, and that's close enough. I'm okay with that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my arrowroot. I need a quarter of a cup, so I'm going to about halfway fill it up. 
And then we want our batter to be nice and light and airy, so we're going to put in a couple teaspoons of baking powder. I've got a nice aluminum-free baking powder. Obviously, it's gluten-free as well. Is that right? Two teaspoons? And then a half a teaspoon of salt. And after I do this, I'm going to go flip over my second tortilla at the stove. Sizzling away. My stove is about, this is my hottest burner, and I have it kind of between medium and medium high. And it's just got a little bit of browning on there. Can you see that? We got a really bright light. You can, I'll show it to you at the end. So again, like I was saying, I want to cook these just till they're done because I want it to still be pliable enough to pick up and and eat it like a taco. So that's going to cook for about another minute. Let me get all my other ingredients in my batter. So I have a whisk. And you know what? I forgot to get out my um, sparkling water. That is, besides the baking soda, that's what makes this really... Um, light and airy is using seltzer water. So make sure you get a seltzer water that doesn't have flavoring. A lot of them have added sugar and flavor, so you just want a plain um, sparkling water. And we'll take about two thirds of a cup. But again, like with the tortillas, I just add that in slowly. Thank you, honey. Club soda. Ooh, it's just water and carbonation. So the recipe says two thirds of a cup. So I'm gonna pour two thirds of a cup. But I'm just going to whisk as I pour it in. So if you just joined us, this is a tempura batter that is acceptable for the autoimmune paleo diet. We're going to fry us up some shrimp. I have some tortillas cooking. Actually, my tortilla is probably done. So I'm going to dump it out. Put it under my paper towel. I'll put that skillet over there. And I set my tortilla right there so it's all ready. So like I was saying when I made the tortillas, the um, cassava and arrowroot flour are both really, really absorptive. They will, I don't feel like that's a word, but I can, they absorb a lot of moisture. And it will kind of seize up and then loosen up a little bit, which is why I like to make this batter and then let it sit. So whatever day I made this recipe, it only took two thirds of a cup, but look at that. That is not a batter. I'm going to need more than that. So I'm going to put about a third of a cup more in here. You know, it could be the batch of cassava flour is different. It could be something that I made a mistake when I wrote down the recipe, but I'm sure that that's not the case. <laughs> My husband is, is laughing. I've not made a mistake yet, so I can't imagine I made one when I was writing down this recipe. I'm, I'm kind of sarcastic, so if you don't know me and you're watching, and I'm being sarcastic. And if you don't like sarcasm, then I'm sorry. So, it's thick. So you probably, I don't know, maybe you haven't seen a tempura batter before. You want your tempura batter to be about like pancake batter, which this is about there. I'm gonna let it just sit for a minute and see what it does. It might loosen up, it might thicken up a little bit, but I don't, I don't wanna just get crazy adding in my club soda because then if it ends up too thin I need to add more flour and that could be a never ending process. So I'm going to prepare my shrimp in just a second but I'm going to get my oil going because to fry well you need your oil to be about 350 degrees. So I'm going to, again I'm using palm shortening. It's really stable. It's stable at room temperature but it's very stable at, at so I'm going to move it to this one. It's stable at high temperatures, which that's the kind of oil you want to use, which is why people who aren't following a paleo diet would use something like canola oil or corn oil or peanut oil, but we're not using those refined oils because they're very inflammatory. They're nothing but omega-6 fats, and that's, it's just very inflammatory to your body. I'm kind of guessing I'm probably going to end up with about a cup and a half of the palm shortening in there, and it will melt. And this is my candy thermometer, and I've been real careful. I've cl it comes with this little clip. It clips onto the side. You just want to make sure that, it, that the, the base of the thermometer doesn't touch the bottom of your pan because you don't care what temperature your pan is. You care what temperature your oil is. So that's going to melt. It's going to heat up pretty quickly, and we're going to work. We're going to keep checking on our tempura batter, and we're going to work on our shrimp. Now, where did my shrimp go? Oh, here we are. I've got them sitting in a bowl of ice because 
seafood really needs to stay cold. So even when I bring it home from the grocery store, instead of just putting it in the fridge, I'll usually take it out of the paper that it's in and put it in a bowl of ice like that. So I went ahead and peeled and deveined all but two of these because I wanted to show you two different methods. So one is the knife method. And I like a little um, serrate, a sharp serrated knife. Or this is particular. This is called the crab, Mr. Crab Zipper, and I'm sure you can buy this online. We bought it at a specialty kitchen store. It's just a few dollars, and you use this to to peel and devein. And I have found on some shrimp it works really well. On some shrimp, it doesn't work at all. Um, these particular shrimp, these are wild North Carolina caught shrimp, and it has seemed to work really well on these. You just slide it right in and pull up. I think it's because the skins are thin on these particular shrimp and then you peel off and you know people say vein it's really a digestive tract but maybe because vein doesn't sound as gross as digestive tract I don't know but if sometimes you peel it off and you don't even see that little um, that little black line in there and this one I see it sometimes the little ripper will grab it this time it didn't so I just grab it with my fingers and just pull it out that's not a big deal just if you have people in your house that are kind of squeamish, don't let them see that because it's kind of gross. And then the other way, which I think works really well, is I just lay it down, turn it this way, flat so I'm stable, you need that thing for me, and just kind of slice through the top. Slice it all the way down. And it does the same thing. And see this one, it didn't have that little vein right in there, so I didn't have to mess with it. How he didn't have a digestive tract, I don't know. So like I said before, you always want fresh, wild caught fish. You can buy shrimp that has already been peeled and deveined, but it's probably not as fresh. And you can buy cooked shrimp already, but we don't want to buy it cooked. We want to cook it ourselves, prepare it the way we want it prepared so we know exactly what's in there. And so, and it's cheaper. You always have to do a little more work. You save some money, you gotta do a little bit more work. Paleo is very expensive. So I, I cut costs where I can, and so I'm always going to prefer to peel and devein my own shrimp because it really doesn't take that long. My batter has thickened a little bit. It's a little too thick, so I'm going to add just a little bit more. If you have just joined us, you're watching on PigCast. I'm Elizabeth from OurPaleoFamily.com. And if you would please be sure to like the KidCast page, and then when the show's over, go over and like um, our Paleo Families page, and you can visit my website. I have these recipes are all up there. These are called AIP or Autoimmune Paleo Tortillas, and then I have AIP Shrimp Tempura and Tropical Salsa Slaw. Those are the three things we're making tonight. So I've gotten my batter just the way I want it. And actually, because I don't have very much shrimp and I want to be thrifty, I'm going to some of this batter into another bowl so that I can use it to maybe make some chicken fingers for my kids tomorrow. So I can refrigerate that and it will be it will be totally fine tomorrow. They were kind of naughty this evening and had to go to bed early and they were looking forward to having some shrimp tacos for a bedtime snack. Doesn't everybody have shrimp tacos for bedtime snack? Um, but fried shrimp was quite enticing but not enticing enough to behave themselves. So I just dipped my, dipped my shrimp in. I'm gonna give them, toss them to coat. Let them get in there. And then they are fine. They can just hang out for a minute while I check the temperature of my oil. I'm trying to get up to 350 degrees because I want it to fry quickly and I don't want my shrimp to get um, greasy. I don't have quite enough in there, I don't think, for it to be touching the thermometer well. So I'm going to just tilt my pan, which will get the, the base of the thermometer fully submerged in the oil, and then I'll know for sure when I have it up to the right temperature. This, um, I don't want to start a fire, that's for sure. It's quickly reaching 340, so I know it's going to be fine. I'm going to get myself set up. Before you get started, you always want to set yourself up so that you're ready. So I've got a rack 
with, um, sorry, a tray with a rack over it. If you just laid your shrimp right out on this, it would get kind of soggy on the bottom. So by having the rack there, it will help it to stay crispy even on the bottom. And as soon as you pull anything out of um, a batter, or even if you've like oven fried, you always want to salt right, at, right when you've pulled it out because it's hot, the oil is hot, and it will, um, the salt will adhere nicely. I'm gonna get two little forks. I'm gonna think about sometimes all the tools I'm gonna use. So I know my oil is hot. The temperature will come down when I put my shrimp in. If any of that excess batter is gonna drip off, let it drip off. You just want to do a few at a time because if you crowd your pan, they'll stick together. They'll cool off the oil too fast. They won't cook evenly. And they're going to cook really fast, so don't feel like you have to rush it to put a whole bunch in there at one time. I tried one time. I, I made my shrimp. I think maybe it was chicken. And I didn't get them quite as brown and crispy as I wanted, and so I tried to put them back in the oil. And that didn't work. They were kind of greasy. So be patient. Let them fully cook. You know what? I have a little bit of water on my hand. And if I have any water drip into that oil, it will splatter. And it will burn me. And it will make a really big mess. So I'm going to just make sure I dry my hand really thoroughly. Okay. I'm going to flip these guys over. I only have about a half an inch of oil in my pan. If you're going to fry, you want to use a high-sided pan. That will help contain the splatters, make it safer for yourself as well. And I chose this one because it's smaller and I don't have to use as much oil. Now, I will probably just discard this oil when I'm done because I fried shrimp in it and it will leave some shrimp taste. But if I was gonna cook some shrimp or fish again tomorrow, I would save this oil and I would use it again because it's, it's very pure. There's nothing wrong with it. We'll save a little bit. I'm going to let them go. They're not going to get really, really dark brown like, like some restaurant products, but I want them to have a nice little golden hue to them. So just to remind you, we're talking about autoimmune paleo. I went through what you can't eat on autoimmune paleo. You take out eggs and you take out nuts and seeds. And a lot of people ask, what is a seed-based spice? So if you think about what's in your spice cabinet and think about the herbs, I'm going to take this off because I know my temperature is fine and I don't want to send that flying. If you think about all the things in your little jars that are leafy, so like basil, oregano, thyme, marjoram, rosemary, those guys are all safe on autoimmune paleo because they're coming from a leaf. They're not a seed. But then you get to mustard. You know, mustard comes from mustard seed, paprika, all of the peppers, cayenne pepper, chipotle pepper, black, even black pepper. Um, what is acceptable on autoimmune paleo and what is off limits? There's some variation in, in what people think. So I would say my recommendation if you're going to embark on this diet is to go with the most restrictive at first, see how you feel, and then add things back in. Um, believe it or not, egg yolks are one of the most easily tolerated foods, and so they're one of the first that people add back in. I believe I added in some spices first. No, I added in coffee first, which is, which is from a seed. Um, so then I figured, well, if I'm okay with that, I can add back in some of these seed-based spices, and sure enough, I could. But I know that I don't tolerate nightshades very well, which are tomatoes, eggplants, white potatoes. I can handle some, but not a lot. I can't really have peppers at all. So I'm putting in my shrimp. This is just about a half a pound of shrimp. For my family, I would do a full pound because they love shrimp. Um, but I was just making these for you tonight. So I just got enough to show you the recipe. So they're still sizzling away. My, I, I didn't adjust the temperature on my on my um, of my oil and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this up because I just the longer your oil is exposed to the air the better chance that something could get in there and cause some rancidity and we want to protect it so I'm going to just go ahead and put the lid back on because I know that I'm done with that for tonight 
Um, and while those are frying, I need to watch them because they only take a couple minutes on each side, but I'm gonna get started on my slaw. So like I said, I didn't want to make a coleslaw and make a salsa. I wanted to just mix it together because I was trying to save probably a dish. I didn't want to get too dishy dirty because basically the same ingredients are going in. Normally when I make coleslaw, I would make it with mayonnaise. On my last show, I made a homemade mayonnaise and showed you how easy that is to make a healthy mayonnaise with an oil that's acceptable in the paleo diet. But uh, mayonnaise has eggs in it, so you can't have mayonnaise if you're following a strict autoimmune paleo diet when you've really, you're still eliminating everything. So instead of mayonnaise, we're gonna mash up some avocado. I'm keeping my cameraman busy tonight. He's getting his exercise, and I have just started wearing my pedometer again because my feet hurt. I have arthritis in my feet, and so I felt like I was sitting more than I needed to. So I thought I need to wear my pedometer and see if I can make sure I'm getting my 10,000 steps a day. I think I'm gonna get them today, just back and forth between the stove and the island. So I'm gonna make my dressing first, and I have a ripe avocado here, and I'm gonna just slice this around the middle, not slice my finger, and whack out that seed. And this one has a little, um, a little bad spot right there. It's not a bug or anything in there, but it's black, and I don't think it should be black, so I'm gonna throw it in the trash. So you know what, I think I probably only need a half of an avocado. So I'm gonna start with that. So like I said, this is the substitute for my mayonnaise. And you want the avocado to be really ripe so it's nice and soft. And just mash that up nice and smooth. You don't want any, it's not guacamole, we don't want lumps. We're making like a, like a creamy sauce. So typically a dressing for a mayonnaise with, I'm uh, sorry, for a slaw would be some mayonnaise, which is your oil component, and then a little bit of vinegar, and maybe something sweet, and that's it. Mayonnaise and vinegar, and a little honey or maple syrup, maybe some salt and pepper. You wanna be careful putting a lot of salt in um, cabbage because it will draw the water out of your cabbage and make it soggy. All right, so I have my shrimp here. I think I need to turn my oil up a little bit. I really can't wait to try one of these. See how yummy? Um, a lot of people that are following, a lot of the autoimmune paleo expert people, they're trying to get me to eat liver and brains and heart and all that other kind of stuff. And I know that it's good for me. I know that there are nutri nutrients in those organ meats that you don't get from other foods. But when I look at a recipe for liver, that doesn't make me want to eat dinner. And when I'm trying to get healthy mentally and physically, I, I need to eat. And I want to eat something that I'm going to be excited to eat. So we eat a lot of salad. We eat a lot of the lettuce wrapped burgers. But to have something like fried shrimp as a treat every once in a while, I mean, it does a lot for your for your tummy, and it does a lot for your, just kind of your psyche, because you can really start to feel like, I can't eat anything, and that's really defeating, and it's gonna be hard to stick with it, even if you're feeling better, but you're gonna feel better if you have an autoimmune disease and you're following this diet. Um, but it's hard to stick with it if you are really unhappy about what you're eating. So every once in a while, a treat like this is really an amazing treat. So a little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit goes a long way. And like I said, normally I would have some kind of sweetener and I have my honey standing by in case of emergency. But because I'm putting mango and pineapple in here, I don't know that I'm gonna need the honey, so I'm not gonna put it in. I am gonna put in about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt because I know I'm gonna need some salt, I just don't wanna over salt it. So I'm gonna set that aside. That's really the base. Mmm, avocado. That's the base of my dressing. I'm gonna slice up my cabbage. I got this cute little teeny weeny head of cabbage from Whole Foods today. It's always safer to cut something when it's flat, so I just cut that right in half. And you can run your cabbage through a food processor and shred it really fast. It'll be nice and fine. 
but I just didn't want to mess with that tonight. I'm happy with cutting it like this. Just cut it down. I already took off the outer leaves that were kind of brown. Go through it this way. However you like it. If you like it really fine, you can spend a few more minutes chopping. I don't need it that way. I like it kind of big and kind of chunky. And cabbage, it seems like a little bit goes a long way. If I buy a regular big head of cabbage, I feel like we're eating it for months. So in goes my cabbage. And my shrimp, I know, they're calling my name over there. I think they're gonna need to be flipped. So I'm gonna head that way and wipe my hands. I always wear an apron, not because I think it makes me look all domestic, but because I'm really messy. And I would ruin my clothes if I didn't. And I like to be able to just wipe my hands on my, on my shirt instead of having to seek out a towel. So we've got our autoimmune paleo shrimp in the skillet, frying up some nice tempura shrimp coated in a batter made with club soda and salt and cassava flour and arrowroot flour. And that's it. This is totally acceptable in the autoimmune paleo diet. And over here we have our tropical salsa slaw going. I have some pineapple that was in my freezer because sometimes when we buy a whole pineapple, it'll just be ripe before we know it. And we're not able to eat a whole pineapple. Pineapple is really acidic and it actually upsets my stomach if I eat too much and my daughter as well. Even though she could sit and eat a whole pineapple, um, it will make her not feel well. So I'll end up cutting it up and putting it in these little baggies and putting it in the freezer. It defrosts really fast. Or you can keep it frozen and use it in smoothies. Ooh, you can make a pineapple upside down cake. There are all sorts of things you can do with that. Okay, and here's my mango. And these are a little tricky, but there's a big seed in there that's kind of shaped like this. And you're supposed to cut down the side along that seed. And I successfully did it because I didn't hit the seed. And then you score it. So I cut a bunch of lines one direction, and then I cut a bunch of lines the other direction. If I had a slightly smaller knife, that would be easier. And then you kind of turn it inside out, and you have all these little chunks. I am going to grab a smaller knife because I'm feeling that's kind of precarious. And then you just slice them off. I want smaller pieces in here, so instead of cutting that whole big chunk off, I'm going to kind of slice my way down. And I'm going to check on my shrimp because I think they're probably done. And then we'll finish up the slaw, and we're almost done. I'm going to turn off my oil before I forget that. Frying is such a pain in the neck. I don't do it very often, but it is really a treat when we do, and it's so yummy. Like I said, I feel like we're normal, and we're not following any kind of special diet. Everybody loves it. It's not liver. It's a lot yummier than liver. I'm going to hit those ones I just got out with some salt. So I'm going to bring them over here. So we have our tortillas that we prepared. Let me see if, if it's not, if they have gotten crispy and they're not flexible anymore, you can stick them in the microwave or in the skillet for a few seconds and they'll um, get pliable again. That's, it's pretty pliable. This one, yeah, they'll be fine still. So I'm going to leave them there while I finish up my salsa real fast. In here I have some avocado with a little bit of apple cider vinegar little bit of salt and that's my dressing and I'm throwing in some mango I have cabbage pineapple if you have any questions about the autoimmune paleo diet please ask my husband will read me your question um, if you're just joining you want to put in your name and where you're from we'd love to know where you're watching from if you can't watch live this video will be up on the KidCast page and you can continue to watch it later. I just checked the other day and I think the first three that uh, three shows we did are still up there. We did an introduction to paleo. We did budget paleo uh, because that's the most common question I was receiving. It isn't paleo really expensive and yes it can be. So I did a whole show about how to stick with a budget, a reasonable budget and still eat this way. And then we did some cooking with the kids where we made really fun foods. And tonight we're doing autoimmune paleo. And I'm showing you the autoimmune paleo. It doesn't have to be boring, just plain meat and veggies, because that's really what the diet boils down to. 
meat, healthy fat, and vegetables. Avocado is full of great nutrition. Um, you can It can be hard for people to get in enough calories when they first start following a really restrictive diet like the autoimmune paleo diet can be. You really need to not be afraid of fat and make sure you're getting enough healthy fats in your diet and get that through your meat. Bacon, bacon is good. It's fine as long as you're um, buying the healthy bacon and you can eat that as much as you want and you'll need it. You'll need those calories. Okay, so I'm going to give this a little taste and see if it's seasoned okay. It's so good. My kids would look at it and say, why is it green? And I would just say, because cabbage is green. But the dressing is made out of avocado and it's so delicious. It's creamy. You won't be missing the eggy mayonnaise at all. So we're going to build our taco here. I'm going to scoot this out of the way. I wish we had some editing like on Food Network and you would come back and everything would be clean. But we don't because we're Facebook Live. So here's my autoimmune paleo tortilla shell. I can hold it in my hand and I am going to, I think I'm going to put my salsa in first. So I've sort of mixed up. You know what I forgot? I was going to put some green onions in this. Green onions would add a really nice um, sort of pungent fresh flavor. I'm not going to do it tonight because you know what a green onion is and I would slice it and I would stir it in. Okay. So if you, I believe that's in the recipe online. So um, add in a little bit of green onion and that will add a really nice flavor. Unless you don't like green onions and then no, that's perfectly okay. Oh, they're so crispy. I wish you could. Can you hear it? It's nice and crispy. Oh, look at that. Okay, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put two in there. You can fold this up. Can I take a bite? I wish I didn't eat dinner. So, let me chew. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Elizabeth Hines. My blog is ourpaleofamily.com where I post lots of recipes. Um, they're all paleo. That's not true. I occasionally have something that's just gluten free and that will usually be a treat, a, a cake or a dessert or something. Um, but 99.9% .9 of what I post is paleo, and at least paleo, and then a good number are autoimmune paleo, and often I'll have a recipe that I'll give some alternatives for if you just want to leave out this spice, um, or maybe like sub out the mayonnaise with the avocado, and then you've got autoimmune paleo acceptable slaw. So I have lots of recipes there. I, have a I am not good at social media, and I admit that. So um, I had my Facebook page that I started last November, and I apparently never published it. And my technical advisor husband discovered that, and so he just published my Facebook page. So I don't have very many friends over there. So please head over, after you like the KidCast page, head over to Our Paleo Family on Facebook and like that too. Um, check out the blog, and you can even leave a comment after the fact, and I'll look at those comments and answer your questions. If you have something you'd like to see me cook, I'd be happy to do that next time. So I hope you make this recipe. You will love it. Your family will think you are a rock star. Good night, everybody.